All right, so the next one here, U.S. cyber attack on an alleged Iranian spy ship. So the U.S. recently conducted a cyber attack against an alleged Iranian spy ship that has been operating near Djibouti. This was reported by NBC News on Thursday. So one U.S. official identified the ship as the motor vessel Bashad, which is registered as a cargo ship in Iran. The U.S. claims that the ship is used to provide intelligence to the Houthis, while Iran's ambassador to the U.N. insisted last week that the vessel is in the Red Sea to combat piracy activities and is not involved in Houthi operations. The nature of the cyber attack on the Bashad is unclear. The U.S. official said that it was intended to disrupt the vessel's alleged intelligence operations. So the cyber attack occurred about a week ago and was part of the U.S. response to the drone attack that killed three members of the U.S. Army Reserve and wounded about 40 Arizona National Guardsmen at a secretive U.S. base in Jordan near the Syrian border. So that attack on Tower 22 that killed three U.S. troops also wounded 40 members of the National Guard. And, you know, this is a secretive U.S. drone base that's used to support airstrikes in Syria and Iraq. Why isn't it just crazy that it's the National Guard that gets deployed there? That's why uh, I've been pushing the for people to get involved in the defend the guard stuff because um, I think it it has a lot of power. If they if they pass the legislation in a state, that means the federal government cannot deploy that state's national guard to war zones where uh, if Congress hasn't officially declared war, and they haven't done that since World War II, um, and that's who is deployed to Syria, Iraq, and and this secretive base in Jordan. Um, so I think it's really important. I've been putting, if you look in the description, either on the YouTube channel or if you listen to the podcast, you can find it in the description as well, the link to the phone bank for Defend the Guard. And just go to their website and check it out. See what the status is um, in your state with the legislation. They're working in, I believe, 30 states at this point. All right, uh, to get back to the story here. So the Pentagon admitted that it had no evidence Iran was involved in the Jordan attack, but it blamed Iran anyway because it arms the Shia militias the U.S. believes were responsible. So again, they're saying this was part of the response to the Jordan attack. And the U.S. on February 2nd, the U.S. launched those heavy airstrikes in Iraq and Syria that they said was retaliation, which killed around 40 people. Mostly, They killed mostly members of the militias, but the... Uh, Air Wars, which is kind of a monitoring group that investigates civilian casualties, they looked into the civilian deaths in Iraq and they said that up to three civilians may have been killed. Um, so the uh, before the U.S. launched those airstrikes, U.S. officials told media outlets that part of the plan was to conduct cyber attacks against Iran as part of the response to the Jordan attack. So here we, it looks like they did it to this ship. And the U.S. has a history of conducting cyber attacks against Iran, the most infamous being the Stuxnet virus that was designed by U.S. and Israeli intelligence and targeted Iran's civilian nuclear program back in 2010. But I know during the Trump administration, there was reports of cyber attacks against Iran. And, uh, you know, it's something that a tactic that the U.S., I think, commonly uses against the Iranians.